Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and this is part two of how to build a center console. If you haven't seen part one, there will be a link in the description, so go watch that first. There are four main steps to building a center console. In part one, I show you the first three steps where you find a place to mount the console securely, then you draw your design and build it out of cardboard, and then you transfer that design to a piece of wood and add your accessories such as switches and phone charging outlets. In this video, part two, we're going to complete the build by finishing step four, where we cover the console with foam and our material. And in my opinion, this is the hardest part because you really want to make sure it looks good. So let's begin. For step four, you want to find a large workplace where you can lay out your material, your foam, and your custom center console. Next, we're going to remove all the switches and the black plastic so we have just the bare wooden center console. Now when you wrap the foam and material around your console, you have to think about it as like wrapping a present. This box represents our center console. The first thing you have to think about when wrapping your center console is where to start and finish your material. Because with a present, you could just tape up over here and then fold in the edges. But with your center console, you can't just do that. You would either have to sew it, which would make it a lot more difficult, or find a way around that. So to combat our first problem, which will be the seam, we're gonna take the front right here and completely remove it and we'll wrap this separately. The other piece that we'll wrap separately is the lid. So now I'm gonna show you the process of wrapping the lid. The first step is to place the lid on the foam and trace it so you know exactly where to cut the foam. Next, cut the foam out so it fits the lid. Make sure you cut the foam slightly larger than the lid so the foam hangs over the edge just like that. And this looks good. Now we're going to use a spray adhesive and this is the same stuff you use for when you put a new headliner in on the roof of your car so it could withstand the heat in the interior of the car in the summer. Now spray the lid and cover at least half the surface. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just going to hold the foam in place as we work with the material. Eventually the material itself is going to hold the foam in place anyway. Now place the foam on the glue and press down for good contact. Set that aside to dry for a few minutes and as that dries we're going to do the front piece. The process is the same. Mark the foam, cut the foam, hit it with some spray adhesive, and attach the foam with some pressure. The glue gets tacky fast so we could handle it, but it takes about 30 minutes to dry completely. While that dries, we could carefully measure and cut some material for our lid and our front panel. Let's get the canvas on the table and place the lid and front piece on the top so we know how much to cut. Remember that you can always cut away excess material, but you can't add new material. So I'm leaving about a three to four inch space to play it safe. One thing I like about this canvas is it's really easy to cut with regular scissors. And it doesn't fray at the end, which is nice. All right, with our piece cut, we need to make sure we use the correct side of the material. There are two different sides to this material. On this side, we have the canvas side, which is what we want to keep on the outside because we want this to match our interior. And on the other side, we have this rubber waterproof material, which is going to go on the inside, touching the foam. So we want this side down. And let's cut the piece to cover the front. Again, you want to make sure you have enough material to fully wrap around the front panel. And when you're sure you have the correct amount, you can make your cut. Good. And the rest of that piece is going to get used for the lid. Before we go wrapping our lid in our front piece, I want to show you something. Grab 100 grit sandpaper, and what you want to do is there's going to be a sharp edge right here, which could easily cut the material over time just from moving back and forth. So you just want to get your sandpaper and sand right on the edge here. And you want to sand that down so there's no more edge and it's nice and smooth. That way when the material goes over it, you don't have a hard edge, you have a nice rounded edge. Make sure you do the same thing for all four edges of the lid as well. So now all four edges on our lid are nice and rounded so it won't cut the material. Now let me show you how to cover the lid. For the lid, I'm actually going to place two more pieces of foam on top because we want extra cushion and we want it to feel soft since it is an armrest. So now the foam is a total of two inches thick instead of one inch. Okay, now let's get our material with the canvas side down and we'll be wrapping the lid first. So place that on the canvas with the foam side down. Make sure the material can wrap around all four sides of the lid and it does. So now we want to get our staple gun ready and pick one side of the lid to start on. So fold the material on that side, grab your staple gun, and staple the material in a few spots so it's secured. Good. Now you want to press down on the lid to compress the foam. And with the foam compressed, 
Pull the material around the side of the lid as tight as you can. And then carefully get your staple gun so the material doesn't slip and become loose. And then staple it in place. Once you get that first staple in place, it should hold pretty well. So then you could readjust your hand, snug up the material again, and staple that down. All right, that looks really good. You can see it's taking the form of the compressed foam. It's kind of at an angle. Now let's do the sides. Again, compress the foam. And since the material I'm using doesn't stretch, we need to fold this like gift wrapping a present. So fold it over so the material is neat and tight, just like that. And then staple it down. Nice. Now do the same for the other side. And now that the corners are stapled, compress the foam and fold the excess material over. Pull the material nice and tight and staple it down. All right, that looks great. Do the same exact thing for the other side. On this side, we have a lot of extra material, so don't be afraid to cut some away so it's easier to manage and so it's less bulky. If you have leather or vinyl that's flexible and stretches, the job is so much easier. And then you might not even have to fold the material. You just use a heat gun and stretch it and staple it. But since we have canvas, we have to make these folds, which is fine. Get our last staples in here, and there we go. Look at that. That looks really good. Now we just have to repeat this process for the front piece. But since I already went over the process, I'm just going to go speed through this one. Once you do one flat panel, they're all the same. And there we go. We got the front done, and we got our lid done. And now we have one thing left to cover. Now let's apply the same process to the center console. First, let's sand down the sharp edges of the wood. Make sure you sand down the corners as well because they are pretty pointy. Next, spray the adhesive and place the cutout pieces of foam on top. Flip the console over and spray the adhesive on the other side. Add the foam to this side as well. And don't forget to spray the rear panel and add the foam there too, so we have complete coverage around the whole center console. Next, lay out your material and trace the console, leaving four to six inches of space around the console. Like I said before, you could always cut away extra material, but you can't add on material. And once you trace your line, grab your scissors and cut it out. Now let's get down to the fun part. Lay the console on the material and make sure you have enough material so you can wrap completely around the console. Good. We have enough material, so pick one side and let's start working from the front. Just like before, get your staple gun and staple the material for your starting point. If you need, use a scissor to make any cuts so it fits. And that little cut makes it fit way better. So now we'll work on the other side. So flip over the console. Pull that material tight and staple it in place. All right, so we got both sides stapled in. We have that side stapled in and that side stapled in. And now the whole thing is completely wrapped. Now we have to figure out the top, which is gonna be these folds here, and then the bottom, which is actually what we're gonna be doing next. So for the bottom, we're gonna be stapling it underneath nice and tight pulling it all the way around so it looks good. So let's go do that. Okay, the bottom's gonna be really easy. And we'll start right here in the front. Fold any corners you have to make it nice and neat and staple that down. And you're literally just working your way around the console, pulling it tight and stapling it down. And there we go, it's that simple. Now because we have a complex shape, it's multi-layered. We have this bottom part here and then we have the top part here. You can see I made an incision here and no matter what, you're gonna have material missing. We're taking this flat surface here and we're trying to make this material bend around it. And this isn't very flexible. So you're gonna get gaps here. So what we're gonna do to get around that is we're gonna do this bottom part right here, all the way across. And then we're going to get another wrap and wrap the top part, but we're going to have a little fold here so it looks nice. And I'll show you that. But first, let's get this bottom part wrapped up, just like that. Now I'm going to trim off this extra material at the top to make it easier to work with. And I'm carefully going to make a small cut right here. And that'll allow us to fold the material over 
and pull it tight just like that. Now we could get that stapled in place. And we could staple the rest of this side so it's tight. Follow the same procedure on the other side as well. Carefully make a small cut. Good. And staple that side in place so it's nice and tight. And secure the rest of this side with staples. All right, let's cut this flap of material just hanging out here. And if you do make a mistake or don't like how something looks, don't worry. Staples could be easily removed with a flathead screwdriver. Then adjust your material and re-staple the area. And this is looking really good. So we have both sides done. And then now we need to do the top. So this extra material, you could either cut it off right here or just leave it. I'm just going to leave it. And what we're going to do is just how we wrap the bottom, we're going to wrap the top. So we're going to get a piece that goes all the way around, completely around this whole thing. We'll tuck in the tops and we'll staple it up. So grab your material, make sure it'll cover the whole top. And we have plenty here. Then draw a line at the top part of the console where you want it to get covered. And then fold the material over that line, and you'll see why we're doing this in a second. Cut the material out. Good. Now let's test fit this with the folded part facing down. Nice, this looks good. But we do need to trim just a little off. Now we're going to start wrapping the top part of the console. Just like before, start from one side and staple it down. Then pull the material tight from the other side and staple that down. So that's what our seam is going to look like. Right now it looks decent, but it's going to look way better once we finish. Now we can work our way around the top and staple the material in. And if you can't tell already, there's a lot of stapling to get done. So make sure you have plenty of staples loaded up in the staple gun. And eventually, we'll come to a spot where we can inspect our work, and this is coming along nicely. You can see the wood right here when the lid's open, so I'm tucking in a piece of material to cover the wood. Alright, this is looking really good. Now we have a few more things we need to do. We need to put the top on, we need to put the front on, and we need to screw this in for all our switches. So the first thing I want to do is put the front on, and that's going to go right in here. Since the front piece has material over it now, it's thicker. So this is a really tight fit. But we got it in. Now I was planning on screwing this in. I even painted the screw heads black so they would blend in. But I don't think there's a need for the screws because the extra material here really pinches this together. And I mean, this is in there good. This is not going anywhere. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it, see how it works out. Especially when we put the piece of plastic on top of here and screw it in. I mean, this thing is pretty solid as it is. I think it would look good without the screws, so we're just going to leave it just like that. Kind of works out. Now, let's go get this lid on and make it hinge. So we want this to open just like that, so that it opens towards the passenger side. So our hinges are going to be right here, and I just have a little pack of hinges. Comes with two hinges and all the screws we need. So this is where I want to put the hinges. I'm going to drill it right in. I'm drilling pilot holes and using the hinges as a template so I know where to drill. Next, just screw the supplied screws in so it's snug. And then we can repeat the process on the other side. Align the hinge, screw the pilot holes, and screw the screws so they're snug. Alright, now that we got our hinges on, let's connect our lid. The lid will go just like that. One thing to mention is to make sure the drill bit you're using won't go all the way through the wood and damage the material on the other side. You can see this bit is adjusted so it won't go all the way through. Then use the holes in the hinge to drill your pilot holes in the correct spot on the lid. And screw those screws in. Repeat the process on the other side. And the lid is done! Now let's get our plastic pieces in place. Now to mount our ABS plastic, I have some really nice stainless steel screws. So let's start with our backboard where we're going to mount our siren control box. This bracket makes it really easy for us. Just screw the first screw, then the second screw, and that's secured in place. 
Next, let's screw down the base panels. Start with the pilot hole, then add our stainless steel finishing screw. And repeat the process for the other side. The tape measure allows me to keep an even spacing so the screws look good. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Work our way around, screwing the front corner in, then the other corner, and finally, the last screw goes in. And this is really starting to shape up. Next, let's install the siren and switches. The cables for the siren fit right in this hole at the base, just like that. And then the siren control box gets held in with two side screws. Perfect. Next, let's get the pods in. And they slip right in. Now these are gonna look awesome flush mounted, and the good thing is, all you do is put it right in, and you take this nut, and you tighten it all the way up against here, so then it forces it in place. Now let's tighten these up. Tighten the voltmeter, the USB ports, and finally the cigarette lighter. Now we could take our momentary switch and push it in. Awesome. Next we have our light bar switch. The wire runs through the hole. And there is double sided tape on this, but let's wait on that. And the piece de resistance. Oh baby, look at that. That is exciting. And then these switches go right in. Now we could tape this down since everything is done. Just a little pressure and perfect. Holy smokes, this looks awesome. This is unbelievable. I cannot, oh man. I'm jealous that this is not mine. This is so nice. Woo! I cannot wait to hook all this up. Let's go get this baby inside the car. So this is what we started with, a big old empty space. Then we made a template out of cardboard and transformed that into our wooden base. And finally, we have our finished console and that looks amazing. Let's go take a seat. Woo, look at this. This looks so good. Oh man, and is that comfortable? That is unbelievably awesome. I am so excited about this, if you can't tell. This is really something else here. Look how cool this is. Oh man, everything's in the perfect place. You could put your cell phone here, maybe in the future get like a holder or something. Got all the switches right at your fingertips. And this is just perfect. I'm excited about this. I wish this was my car, because this is awesome. Now all you have to do is bolt it in, and that'll make sure the console is secured and won't move. So this will be safe in case of an accident. And would you look at that, that thing is not budging. And there you go, that's how you build your own custom center console that not only looks great, but it's fully functional. You could put switches in it. Really, you could put whatever you want on it. We went from this drawing to an awesome, fully functional, fully customized center console. And sure, you could buy one of these from the store, but this build was a ton of fun. And you get to be creative. And now anytime you get in your car, you'll be proud of what you built, which is a feeling of accomplishment and pride that you can't put a price on. Now for the next episode of Project Police Interceptor, I'll be wiring up all the switches, all the lights, the siren. So stay tuned for episode five. And as always, hopefully you learned something new, how to build a center console, if the video is helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button below.